Hello. Hello and welcome to Crafts. In today's programme we'll be looking back to the Terrier, the Hound and the Toy Groups to see some more Best of Breed winners. But we'll also be taking our first look at the action events. The speed and precision of agility, the control and discipline of obedience, and we'll start with the furious fun of flyball. And this is the mechanism that gives the sport its name. The dog hits the treadle, the ball flies through the air. It's as simple as that. And there's the course. Two teams will compete against each other. Four hurdles, one fly ball box. The first semi-final is between Presbury and Wilton. This is the first Wilton dog. They'll be furthest away from the camera when you see both teams running. Here we are. And you can see Wilton already has a reasonable lead. The dogs must go out over the four hurdles, they hit the treadle, they catch the ball, ideally, just like that, and they come back over the four hurdles. Even if they drop the ball, they must retrieve it, and they still must come back over the hurdles, or they have to go again. And Wilton still in the lead here, it's very fast, you can't identify the dogs as they go, but Wilton took that first semi-final first leg. And here's just how it's done perfectly, just watch this, beautiful running out, if anything, taking off a fraction early to do the jumps, hitting the treadle, and a perfect catch. Second leg now, best of three, remember, to determine the winner. We're watching the Wilton Dog first, two beautiful catches there, and it's almost neck and neck. In fact, a slow pick-up by Presbury, and I think Wilton now have the advantages as the second Presbury dog makes a mistake and misses two hurdles. That dog will have to go again. Provided Wilton make no more mistakes, or no mistakes from here on in, they will win this heat. So last dog going now. Oh, and a good catch. Wilton have got it all sewn up. Presbury still with one dog to go. Wilton win the heat 2 0. Well, the dogs have a great time. They couldn't care less whether they've won or not. They're playing a game. And in the slow motion, you can see the beautiful elegance of these dogs as they jump and collect the ball. And nice to see the padded boxes to protect the dogs should there be any problem if they collide. The second semi-final now between Rugby and Daventry, these two towns almost next to each other in the Midlands. The Rugby Reds, they'll be nearest to the camera against Daventry farthest away. Daventry just taken out the lead, but that was a very fast run in by Rugby, so it's very close. Slight mistake by the Rugby Reds team, so Daventry have taken out the lead, but they're back on level terms again. This is the third rugby dog, and it is very close. It's going right down to the wire, this one. Now, is there going to be a mistake that will determine it? And there is slight mistake by rugby, and Daventry come through and take the first leg of the heat. Again, best of three. A beautiful run out as we watch the start of the second leg. Rugby, of course, must win this one, and they're already behind, but they must win it if they're going to have a chance of getting into the final. Rugby still trailing. Daventry going very well, but that was a great takeover by Rugby, and a mistake by Daventry. And Rugby are now comfortably in the lead. This is their fourth dog, well ahead. Oh, and a mistake, but came back over the hurdles, and that means that Rugby have levelled the tie. 1-1. Look at that. These dogs have a marvellous time. It's a great fun event, always causes a lot of interest and excitement in the crowd. The deciding leg now, and Rugby open up a slight lead and make a mistake. So Daventry are now ahead. Well, there it is. The picture tells the whole story. Daventry comfortably ahead, Rugby trying to catch up, playing catch-up fly ball. Great catch by Daventry, and another one by Rugby. It's all on the last two dogs. Daventry have done it clean, that's all it needed. Daventry will be going through to the final. And what that means, of course, is that next week in our programme, you'll be able to see the final between Daventry and Wilton. You're the best thing I ever had. Kind of feeling... The best thing about it is the all-pervading feeling of, of love which is surrounding everybody, love of animals, which is, uh, it's very rare to get such an overwhelming feeling of, of love in a crowd, in a crowd of people like this. Now let's turn our attention back to the glamour of the show ring as we show you some more of the dogs that were best of breed in the Terrier group.
24 terriers competed under the eye of the group judge, Mrs. Lids Carthage, Swedish-born, best known for breeding and showing Norfolk terriers. The first one she is looking at is this bull terrier bitch. It's a real gem, which is actually her name, by the way. Champion Japatin Mystery Girl. She's four years old, owned by David Muspratt of Leeds, handled by Patrick Dooner, and it's also been a group winner, this, at the South Wales show. Jem's got an absolutely perfect egg-shaped head that feels like a steel bullet if she runs into you. There's never any spare flesh on this breed. When they're fit, as Jem's brisk movement shows you there, it's a lovely move, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely fabulous. I always call them boneheads, but I'm not really being cruel to them. 75 Bedlington Terriers came to the show this year, came under the scrutiny in the outside rings of Judge Mr. E.L. Hill. And Stella here, or champion Jocelli Joe's girl came out best of breed for owners Terry and Sue Hunter from Dewsbury. Cute, aren't they, Bedlingtons? Indeed. And you know, Peter, it pulls if you own Bedlingtons to hear people wittering on, oh, I like my terriers to look as if they could do a job. Just because this bitch has a certain physical resemblance to a lamb, she'll still catch a rabbit for the pot. And beyond the confines of the Crufts green carpet, she can go in the lightning style of the whippet. I think she's beautiful. This is a second-time breed winner. It's the smooth-haired fox terrier, champion Moss Valley helmsman of Jacques Spot. Splendid name, isn't it? Arrow, as she's known, is two and a half, owned by Jane Jacques from Sheffield. And it's the first time in the big ring for handler Malcolm Murray. He's going to be nervous. Along with the wire fox terrier, the smooth was omnipresent in the early to middle chunk of this century. He abounded in the parts where anxious nannies grabbed their charges high into their arms for fear they would be harmed by this hard galloping rat catcher. Nothing was less likely to happen, but woe betide the passing cat. Indeed, it would certainly give it a fright, wouldn't it? The Kerry Blue here is champion of Ranshire Pioneer, six-year-old dog known as Charlie. It's actually owned by Ron Ramsey and Roger Good, the professional handler in the ring, so it's certainly going to be showed well. Jeff Corish will be uh, taking it around. Incidentally, this one's uh, pup son won the best puppy today. Did he be going? Now, here is a terrier man's terrier, and no mistake. Full of the get-up-and-go of his country of origin, a dog which has obviously kissed the Blarney Stone, one who can keep his end up in any canine conversation, only reaches his best colour after he's reached maturity, but it is worth waiting for. So has this one been worth waiting for, the Norwich Terrier Kizzy. It's a young bitch, only 23 months old, owned by Cathy Thompson from Doncaster. You know, she's only ever entered two shows, and this dog was judged best to breed at them both. Now, Cathy may have difficulty handling, because Lizzie, she says, never stands still. The kennel name is Belleville Sweet Temptation. <laughs> well, it's quite a story, isn't it, to get in there as quick as that. This is the one of the pair of the Norwich and the Norfolk which has got prick ears like the spire of Norwich Cathedral. It's a regular bustler of a terrier, only occasionally throttling back sufficiently to give us a chance to see his feet once he's on the move. A family dog par excellence. This is Winnie the Witch of Hardy Town, comes from Aston Cantlow near Solihull. Winnie's only two years old, was the best Parson Jack Russell bitch at Crufts 96. She's owned by Mark and Tina Allen. It's Tina handling there in the ring. When the Kennel Club announced in the early 80s that it was talking to the Jack Russell fraternity, there was a storm of protest from the protagonists of the shorter leg type. This is the true follow-through from what the sporting parson bred himself. Straight-legged, 14 inches at the withers and weighing around 14 pounds. And the Celium here. Top stage Bailey's on Ice, known as Sebi, two-year-old dog, owned by Joanne Lynn and Rosalita Panak, uh, handled by Harry Horn in the ring there. Best puppy in the breed last year, so uh, dog with a good future. It comes from a village of the same name in rural Wales, this natty little chap. Why he's lost popularity over the past 30 years or so is a complete mystery to me because I don't think anything comes perkier or more capable of putting the wind up a regiment of rats than him. It's a great pity to see a native British breed losing ground while we're importing from every corner of the globe. But as you will have seen in our previous programmes, a different eight terriers actually made it into the final selection and Liz Cartledge finally chose this, the Cairn. Ludwig as the winner of the group. Two and a half. What a champion. More show dogs later on, but for now, let's turn our attention back to the action and the team agility competition. 
And these are the four teams that have battled through to the final. Brettford, Chippenham, Prestbury Park and Peter Lee. And during this and our next programme next week, you'll be able to see the entire Agility final competition. This is round one for Brettford, Tarby and Jane Baldwin. The judge is Dave Perry from Derbyshire and he set a very smart course indeed. The time, 55 seconds allowed. And of course, the usual penalties will apply for knocking off certain elements and not making the contact points. Those red areas are contact points that the dog must make contact with. And of course, the table in the middle, Jane shouting down, the dog must stay down for a count of five by the judge before moving off. And that's all there is to it, really. You're probably familiar with all these obstacles by now. But it's a very tight course, tight corners and straight lines, requiring tremendous concentration and skill from both dog and handler. And nicely through there, 46.56, a clear round. That's a very good marker, and it gives some indication as to whether that 55 seconds for the round is an easy or hard target. So here we go with Chippenham's first dog, Rusty, with Julia Sutton Vane. And as usual, this event always attracting a good crowd around the main arena here at Crufts. Come, come round. Rusty, you sniff, 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 sniff. Yes, obviously these uh, conversational chats that Julia has with Rusty have a good effect. He understands plenty, but this is slow. Now, is the 55 seconds going to be generous enough to allow for that kind of pause? Rusty certainly working slower than did Tarby. Tunnel. But this corner is really very tight. The obvious move is to go straight on that jump, but they've got to turn left to go through the tunnel. It really is tight. It's a very cleverly constructed course. It isn't about speed, it's about accuracy. And they're clear and within the time limit. 53.08. This could be a generous time, 55 seconds. So Chippenham done very well there. A clear round as we watch Presbury Park's first dog, Claire Forbes with Megan. Steady. Steady, Meg. Walk. Go through. Two clear Meg. rounds so far. Meg. Up. Faults are what determine positions. Time is secondary. Meg. Line. And this is certainly very much faster to the table. Get her. But that's a fault. The arm raised by Dave Perry means that the dog left the table before the five count was finished. Five faults. Go through. Here, Meg. It's good and fast. Here. Are they going to make the tight corner? Yes. Go on over. Walk. Go. And Go. makes the contact points. Go. Very neat. Pity about those faults. That was just careless because the time was very good indeed. But that puts them in third place at the moment. So, just Peter Lee to go, and their first dog is Dot with Debbie Fratson. You, Steve. And Stay Debbie, there. very vocal. Go on. Go on, then. Dot! It's very important, though, that you control the dog when they're coming down these slopes. They can easily jump off before the contact points, and that's five careless penalties should they do it. But this is good so far. Ooh, nearly fell off the table, but Down. there, and fraction slower, Down. but it's a good time. They're going to be well within the time limit, no problem at all. And very fast through the weave. Nearly taking the wrong course. This corner is so difficult. I anticipate we will see mistakes here. Still a good time, certainly going to be within the time. So far, it's faultless. Yes, that's good. 46.11, and that is the fastest clear round. That'll put them in the lead at the end of the first round. Here's confirmation of that result. In first place at the moment, Peter Lee. Second, Brentford. Third, Chippenham. And although they were fastest, Presbury Park are fourth. So let's move on to round two. Presbury Park going first. This is Storm Rescue with Margaret Searle. On. Down, down, down. Through. Very accurate over the contact points. On. 
Wait. Down. Over. And it's Go important on. that Over. they go clear because the team already has five Table. faults from that first Down. round. Wait. 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 And a good Wait. speed. Not Wait. the fastest by Wait. any means, but well yeah. within the speed required. Yeah. Now, that's a fault at the start yeah. there. Wait. They have to go into the weave correctly and straight away, Dave Perry indicates five faults. That's a shame. Over. Go on. Over. Through. At this level, Here. you really need four dogs Over. that go clear. Back. Through. Here. Over. Seesaw. One has to say that the standard, Down. the quality right. of these dogs and handlers Down. is tremendous. Just five faults there, well within the time, with a cumulative total of ten faults for the Presbury Park team. And there you can see Storm Rescue making that error at the start of the weave. Next to go will be Chippenham, who were third after round one. This is Meggie with Barbara Banks. Get it, get it, tunnel. They were clear but slowest of the three teams, and you can see how fast get Meggie's it, going it, there because she just rolled over as she landed. Very easy to make mistakes at this speed. Oh, and there's one. Straight off the table, five faults. So hard when your dog is very fast across the ground and quite excitable. You have to be so firm with your control. Wonderful, though, through the weave. Five faults only for the team and for Meggie. Chicken can oh, that's a mistake. Jumping off the seesaw, that could be penalised. And they only just crossed the line. 45.25, and yes, 10 faults. Certainly the first one was very obvious uh, coming off the table, but uh, jumping off the seesaw also cost a further five faults. So 10 for Meggie, 10 for the team. This is Fivepence Fudge with Lindsay Curry for Bretford in second place after round one. Wait. Clear in the first round, and this dog looks quick. Wait. And steady as well. Yeah. Not excitable. This is neat. Wait. Don't. Oh, that Stay. is excellent. Very quick to the table, but what a neat little dog. <laughs> and vocal as well. Yeah. It's sometimes deceptive. The dogs that charge around, you think, my word, they're fast. Suddenly you get a dog that's really steady and neat like this one, covering not too much of the ground, just the right amount. Wait. Waited. That's the perfect leap off the seesaw. This is clear. That's brilliant. 43.94. Terrific time. Lovely little dog, this. Five pence fudge for Bretford. So just uh, Peter Lee to go. This is Charlie with Paul Fratson. Get down. Of course, son. Get down. Two. Two. Of course, son. Charlie. Oh, Charlie got lost in the tunnel. Very slow oh, through there. Again, nice and steady, but uh, lost some time. As we said, the result of this competition will depend on the clear rounds, really. But time is the secondary consideration. If two teams are equal on clears, then time will determine which one wins. What? This is slow what? and, well, this could be decisive in Two. the end. Two. Charlie Cor. Very precise. Back, 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 back. Good handling by Paul Fratson. Charlie. It's obviously a dog that doesn't hurry. You see that leisurely gait, quite happy. This is it, speed to run. Are they going to get in? 55 seconds in, though. They're in comfortably, 53.89. And that leaves the team absolutely clear. But because of the time difference, it does mean that Bretford and Peter Lee have swapped places. Bretford now lead, Peter Lee second, Presbury Park third, Chippenham fourth. Well, we'll bring you the final two rounds of the agility competition next week. But now it's time for the results of our competition. And you'll remember we asked you which dog won Crafts best in show last year the answer was cocker spaniel dog b and the winner is this karen vincent from basingstoke so many congratulations and we look forward to seeing you at crufts next year you're the best it's a really fun show it's nice for the dogs really busy lots of things to do lots of things to see he's really enjoying all the attention he's loving it he's had been here long and everyone's crowding around him he's absolutely loving it everything about it um, because there's no studs and the rainers. He 
loves it. He so enjoys showing. He's just a natural show dog. He spends his whole time showing off, so he has to come. Oh, you know you're with the best of the dogs. You're against the best of them anyway, you know, so you get here, you're happy. Now let's see some more best of breeds from 1997. And this time it's the Hounds. 27 breeds in this group judged on the first day of the show by Jean Lanning. The distinctive shape of the Basenji. This is Tally, Jaswin Thalia at Chimera, who's just over a year old. She was bred by Pauline Varley and is owned by Sharon Thompson and Paul Lee, who's showing her today. A fascinating breed this, isn't it? A bitch that's as trim as they come, never a hair out of place, sharp of expression, clean of coat, clean as a cat, with which the breed is a fair amount in common. And into the bargain, doesn't make a din barking. No, they don't bliss, bark, do bliss they? Bliss, bliss, beyond compare. Wonderful, tidy movement there, too. A little bit of a gallop, but finishing up nicely. Benquest Exquise is a three-year-old Basset Fauve de Bretagne dog, owned, bred and handled by Pam Aldous. Although Eddie's been best of breed five times before, he's been unable to win any challenge certificates as the Kennel Club doesn't yet award them to this very workmanlike little breed. It's a very neat little dog, this, isn't it? All the bravado of a terrier with the hooter of a hound. I can never understand why they're not more popular with the punters, because they don't take up a lot of room. They'll go anywhere and talk to anybody. Shame he's not wagging his tail, though. A little bit overawed by the big ring, it looks like. Could be. Now, a wonderful day for Rosie Clifford, as this is the first CC that she's ever won, and also Monty, this little wirehead dachshund. Able body Pizzicato, a wonderful name, and a super dog, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, it's lovely. Oh, breed always reminds me of the old Wehrmacht field service uniform. Serviceable, totally thorn-proof and well camouflaged. <laughs> An expressive twinkle in his eyes and legs which twinkle as well. And you shouldn't mistake the small size for a sort of a, a dog that's in a low gear, should you? These no. are really active dogs. Absolutely true. And looking the part in the big ring, very controlled, very comfortable with himself. I was given a lovely lick on the nose by this great grey deerhound after the judging, as Onik is famed for his friendliness. Champion Killeter Onik is three years old and lives with Seamus and Nell Kane in his true homeland, Scotland. Nothing ever changes about deerhounds. They've always looked this aristocratic for centuries. An authority recently described them to me as sybaritic. How right he was. The sort of dog which looks at home on the misty mountain or on the hearth in front of the log fire, and no doubt stopping the heat from getting up his own as kilt. <laughs> My parents have these, and I can tell you they'd rather be on the hearth. <laughs> This is Barbara and Brian Stokes's two-year-old elk hound bitch, Kestos Quickstep, or Quali at home. She's a typically noisy, loving, hunting hound, apparently. It's another breed that never seems to change from one decade to the next. It's a kindly, alert expression, storm-proof grey jacket, enough bounce and beef to stand up to the largest deer in the world, whether it's called a moose or an elk. <laughs> and in Norway, they can't aspire to the title of champion until they prove they've got the guts for their day job. Smashing. And, of course, this breed won the group last year. Champion Paran Christmas Ivy is a six-year-old Ibethan hound bitch owned and handled by Jenny Startup from Bulldog in Hertfordshire. Ivy was bred by Burnett Stoneham and has been used as a stunt dog on television. Can you train an Ibethan hound, Mike? I didn't think you could train them to do anything. I had them and you certainly couldn't. But they are runners par excellence. I've lived with one or two over the years and I can vouch for their speed out of the traps. Very, very elegant, beautifully handled by Jenny. From the any variety not separately classified classes came this three and a half year old foxhound bitch, Harambi Mangala, who's well known as Personality Plus at home with owner breeder Janet Nolan. When she stops fidgeting, Gala's had a super show career, the highlight of which was winning reserve best in show at the Hound Show in 95. Of course, it's a breed which doesn't get into the show rings of our world very often, but of course it struts proudly round the rings of the pucker hound shows. This is a smaller bit than the style of stallion hound we've become used to at Crufts in the last year or two, and I think she's very nice with it, a very elegant beast. 
Zephyr is a four-year-old pharaoh hound, Merrimut Memphis. She's owned by Simon and Rachel Benstead, with Rachel piloting her to best of breed and her first CC today. Oh, that's smashing for her. The original dog from the friezes in the temples and the tombs of the Valleys of the Kings. Not the same animal as the Abethan, smaller by some inches, but the same tall prick ears, which can rotate like radar beacons. Mind you, they don't often translate the message from the ears through to the brain. <laughs> A typical hound. These are such strong, solid dogs. Deschamp Gatling, or Gats for short, is a two-and-a-half-year-old bloodhound bred and owned by Philip and Sue Clark from Suffolk. If you want a contrast, well, this is it. Massive in every respect, the magnificent skull, great lugubrious eyes, huge bones to keep him upright, and a swinging stride to take you down to the local and a beer mat to groom him with if you wanted. <laughs> if he carried a magnifying glass, he'd be Sherlock Holmes himself. What a dog. They really are, aren't they? Massive hound. Well, these were, in fact, Gene Lanning's final eight in the Hound Group, and the winner for Crufts 1997 was Viv Phillips' delightful little petit basset griffon Vendien, Cedric. We move on now to the obedience competition for bitches, and there are six different disciplines. The send away, distant control, retrieve, heel work, scent, the sit, and the downstays. In the send away, each bitch should demonstrate a confident outrun, an instant down, and a good response to the recall command accompanied by a well-paced rejoin. Distance control, the key here is that the dog isn't allowed to move more than a body length in any direction. The retrieve, the outrun should be brisk, a good pickup should be clean without running on, pouncing or mouthing, and the return should also be smart. This is the heel work where the bitch should be level with the handler's left leg at all times. She should also respond immediately to commands, and the handler has to respond to the steward's commands too. On to the scent, two decoy scents and the judge's scent, the vital one. That's the one the bitch has to find. Common faults such as mouthing, stopping work, lifting incorrect, cloth, slow return, inaccurate presentation, all of those will incur points deductions. The last two exercises are the sit-stay and the down-stay, sitting for two minutes, down for ten, both with the handlers out of sight. Who are Sandy Wadham's tips for the tops? My favourite is Catherine Gillard with uh, Zola. Being a really consistent bitch and already won the first two major championships this year. Then Mary Ray with Roxy. Mary never lets us down at Crafts. And uh, Corrie Collie's Jessie, Janet Oliver. I just hope Janet will hold it together. So we start with the send away. Third place send a year ago, and one of Sandy's tips, this is obedience champion Minarch Red Arrow. Getting off to rather a hesitant start, unfortunately. Right turn, call your dog. Still right pretty turn. slow. I think she looks Hot. rather anxious. Obedience champion Savannah Scott missed. Send your dog. <laughs> this one's full of enthusiasm. Dang! Skidding right to a halt. Turn. Call your dog. Yeah. Right Paying turn. attention to every single command on the tips of its toes and no points lost on this test. Halt. The difficulty of distant control. Obedience champion Jenna Bacab Instinct, who was last year's winner, appeared not to be on quite such good form this year. He'd moved forward on the setup. But full marks go to obedience champion Zulmarg Zola for a perfect distant control. Retrieve. The pressure of the big ring took its toll for Wen's twins Twiggy, who got just a little bit overexcited. She's completely lost the retrieve object. This way, this way. No, no, wrong. She get there in the end. There it is. Back now to obedience champion Zulmarg Zola with a much, much better effort, losing just one point. Take it. In the heel work, Janet Oliver took obedience champion Corrie Collie's Jessie off in totally the wrong direction. You'd never know it, though, would you? They look cool enough. 
at slow pace. Mary Newell forward. and Mick and Win Coral Circle of Fenelark right. lost 27 points on the heel work, getting a bit overexcited on her first appearance at Crufts. Circle left. Obedience champion It's a Kind of up. Magic lost 13 points on heel work for Sylvia Bishop, despite being such an experienced pair. But obedience champion Ash Lewin and Charisma Kid Towards shows them me. all how it's done. Heidi had a perfect Interfast. heel position, enabling her to take a commanding lead. So it's the German Shepherd Dog in first place, Collies in second and third, and Mary Ray's Belgian Shepherd Dog in fourth. And that's the first we're going to see in the next test, the scent, the one that everyone seems to dread. The judges' cloth is on the top right of the tee with decoys elsewhere. Champion Minak Red Arrow is going to get sent out now to find it, having got the scent off the cloth. Doesn't seem to be working the cloths well at all, very hesitant as she was earlier. Now will she get it? Yes, she's fumbled the pickup though, she'll lose a point for that. Presents it gently. Take it. And finish. Exercise finish. <laughs> Mary Ray still loves it a bit though. In third place at the moment, obedience champion, it's a kind of magic. Much more businesslike. And straight to the judges' cloth, returning it to Sylvia Bishop. Almost knocking it. her over. <laughs> and finish. A nice Exercise test from finished. Wiz. Thank you. Catherine Gillard's in second place at the moment with obedience champion Zulmark Zola. Rushing about all over the place. Nice methodical search. Ah, got it. Take it. And finish. And a good test. Exercise finished. Now our leader, that German Shepherd, obedience champion, Ash Lewin, charisma kid. Got to get a good scent. Having a good sniff round. Kim Ennis must be nervous. That's the one. Very off-putting in that ring with things like the tannoy and the crowd. I mean, these dogs really have to concentrate. Nice finish. Exercise finish, thank you. Excellent. And on to the sit and down stays, the final exercise. There's no change in the positions, but Kim Innes must be absolutely heart in the mouth, I should think, because Ashlu and Charisma Kid is notorious for having a fidget in these tests. Obviously, to stay in first place, Heidi's got to get it right. Somebody's already blown it. That dog's followed its owner out. But it's going to correct itself. I think I'll go back to the right place and settle down now. Oh, whoops, down, though. I'm supposed to be sitting. <laughs> and there is Ashlu and Charisma Kid. Thank goodness in the right position at the moment for the downstay. Remember, this is 10 minutes with the owners out of sight. It's a long time. And there are a lot of distractions going on around the dogs in that crowd. All the handlers out of sight in the collecting ring. Oh dear, now this is Heidi, our leader. She's going to lose a point for that. Will she have blown her chances? There's the judge, Bronwyn Bartley, and her husband. Handlers returning now. Um, Kindy rolled over. I think that's about the only thing. She only rolled onto one. Point. When they first go back to the dogs, they've got to remain in that down position. But once the exercise is finished, <laughs> she knows she's got it now. So, in fact, it was Kim Innes with Ashlu and Charisma Kid, obedience champion, winning the bitch championship for 1997. And here are the final results for this year's competition. Now on to a bit of art in obedience. Mary Ray with her collie, Kizzy.
And if anyone could ever have any doubts that a dog could enjoy obedience, a stunning performance from Mary Ray and Kizzy. Back now to the show ring, and this time it's the turn of the toy group, judged at Crufts 1997 by Joyce Mann. And A is for Affenpincher, Fritzi, or champion avant-garde Reba Bative, a four-and-a-half-year-old dog owned by Jessica Gruninger and bred by Delia Shepherd and Stuart Gordon. And a repeat winner from 1996. It's a breed that's got all the mischief in the world built into his face, and he's got a marvellous cheeky style of going round the ring. He's a deal more powerful than you might expect from his diminutive size, but nobody's ever going to turn him into a sissy. <laughs> no, indeed. American champion Amron's TJ Bear Extraordinaire is an Australian Silky Terrier bred in Texas by Norma Boff, and then imported to the UK by June Sharp, Kathleen Whiteford and Anne and Brian Faulkner. And sounds of the import from the United States of America has brought his own syndicate of owners with him. <laughs> Fascinates me that a teeming, a gritty little Australian Terrier with a Yorkie can produce a breed which has the salient features of either breed so perfectly divided, a tough character with a silky coat. It's a really smart looking little dog, that. Very smart. The little smooth coated Chihuahua, Holly, champion Diella Pretty in Pink, retires today, and what a way to go out. She's won 45 challenge certificates for her owner, breeder Diane Lunny. Quite a tally, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, um, Jess. One should never go in for judging a set of dogs from the ringside, but I think we were both pretty well expecting that this little stunner would get pulled out into Joyce Mann's final eight. It wasn't to be. She had, in fact, a very high-quality group all round, so it's our pleasure to look at her now. I think she's charming. Yes, this is a Chinese crested dog, but a powder puff. James Gleepheath, the gentleman, is still a puppy, just 10 months old, and he must have given his owner breeder Julie Gouveron a heart attack when he fell in the fish pond two days before Crufts. Fancy having to ring him out. <laughs> For those who can remember the days when powder puffs were lucky to be allowed into the ring at all, to see one with this cultured coat is a delight, clothing a frame that's well-constructed and a soundly-bodied dog. I like these little dogs. The Griffon yeah, yeah. Bruxellois, Fenimore Spanking Good Time, is another youngster winning his second challenge certificate today for owner breeder Peter and Mary Ann Mercer. I reckon that good griffons have a habit of looking like pugs which have been miniaturised to squeeze in even more grit and determination into that toy frame. And their owners all seem very clever at finding the sort of name which goes with the seen it all, done it all look. Spanking Good Time. What a super little it's name. It's great, isn't it? Chunky little dog, too. Mm. The delicate lines of champion Salspar Salvador, Tito, a three-year-old Italian greyhound belonging to John and Joan Hardcastle. Tito is the fifth generation of his line to win a challenge certificate at Crufts. What an achievement. Mm, what a contrast to come next after the Griffin to this elegant chap. Look at that lovely sharp outline. The best of the Italians are quite muscular and truly do resemble the full-size jobs, and they have a surprising turn of speed and manoeuvrability when they're on the chase. So delicate, mm. though. Shuji is a three-year-old Japanese chin who's only been lightly shown by his owner breeder, Chris Tappenden. Vival Shuji Tamara would much rather be at home stamping his feet for a titbit. <laughs> Chins have that lovely look of innocence and wickedness about them with that flash of white in the corners of their eyes. His owner must have been thrilled to beat all comers in a really star-studded entry of more than 90. Little nervous, though, peering over his shoulder all the time. Perhaps that's what didn't get him pulled out into that final eight. But these were in Joyce Mann's selection. But the winner of the Toy Group 1997, well, that went to the Top Dog All Breeds 1996. Champion Osmillion Mystification, Justin Osman Samija, rising to the top again. And fairly rushing across the ring, basket in hand with a super, super dog. And that's all for this week. So join us next week when we'll have more from the utility, gun dog and working groups. And we'll show you the dog's obedience competition, final rounds of the agility and, of course, the fly ball finals. Until then, bye-bye. <laughs>